Hey everyone, welcome back to Rio Talk Fire. Today we have the team of Visionary Studios, one of the up and coming Solana projects. They're also partnering up with a lot of projects that I'm involved with, and that's how we got connected to a, a really good friend of mine. Um, so I'm not going to butcher uh, the project and what they're doing in terms of my describing them. So um, we're just going to have them introduce themselves, their roles, and talk a little about Visionary Studios and what's happening. Uh, so who should we kick it off to? Guess I'll start. I'm uh, Jeff Jago. I'm a uh member of the Visionary Guild, been in the crypto space for say about a decade now, and uh, you know, finally have a venture here with Visionary Studios, and uh, basically it's a uh, Web3 project development studio mm -hmm. on Solana. Um, well, basically we're blockchain ag agnostic here, we don't, uh, don't really uh, pick and choose which blockchains we're going to use right now. We're just using Solana because it's the best option when it comes to, uh, you know, settlements and being able to do things in a cheap and fast way. Um, and, and we see that the mainstream adoption for Solana is coming around, but uh, yeah, basically uh, we're, we're building out some projects that we think that uh, are needed in the space. Uh, in the past, we've seen basically, a lot of fundraises without any legitimate uh, business or um, business plan, I should say. Right. And they end up just, you know, creating some staking token and ends up going to zero over time. And so does the project. And so right. we're trying to build with businesses that have existing revenue structures in place that they'll be able to sustain themselves uh, despite the royalties, despite the fundraise of the nft and uh yeah cool awesome uh what is your i know you guys came together maybe friends prior or what, what's the, your background um and how did visionary studios come about maybe someone else could take it or you jago yeah let, uh, am i saying that right J jago or jago it's jago yeah. jago okay but uh i'll let one of them hop in and introduce themselves as well sure i'll, I'll hop in here uh nick oldak um one of the co-founders of Visionary. Uh, my background's in accounting and finance. Uh, that's where I've spent the last uh, decade, decade or so nice. um, in my professional Web2 career. Uh, so Jago, Jasper, Brian, and I um, are all from Connecticut originally, and we have known each other for 15, 20 years. Um, I've been in crypto for four or five years now and got significantly into Solana and NFTs. Um, I want to say earlier in 2021, after uh, catching up with Jago and uh, him him telling me how excited he was, he couldn't stop talking about Solana. So <laughs> that's when I was really uh, turned my attention there and, and have done a deep dive there since. And uh, we we've always known, obviously NFTs and Solana NFTs NFTs blew up in the latter portion of 2021, and we always knew we wanted to do something. Uh, we're super into the concept of Web3 and are, are very bullish on the direction that it's heading. Um, so over the, the last quarter of 2021, we brought a group together um, and we knew we wanted to do something and couldn't, couldn't quite figure out exactly what it was. Uh, but the concept of Visionary Studios came up probably in January or February of 2022. And the four people that I mentioned, so the three of us, then we have Brian, who's also from Connecticut, we brought in TG3, who's a, an attorney in Brooklyn, and then Kyle, uh, our six team members out in LA. And we started having daily meetings, putting together what, what this business concept would look like. And we came up with Visionary Studios, and that was going to be kind of the top umbrella layer and a project development company to utilize and leverage our, our existing relationships um, and partner with a bunch of different companies that we will talk about today, as well as incubate and develop our, our own projects. So that's kind of the, the background as to how Visionary came about. And uh, we're four months into it now, and uh, things are rocking and rolling. Very excited to, uh, to be here and talk about it today. Nice. So where were you guys when I was thinking about the same thing? I, I missed the boat <laughs> here. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, Jasper, uh, we'll kick it over to you. Yeah, I mean, I think Nick touched on, you know, that's that's as perfect of an overview as you could really give for Visionary. Um, Jasper Lieberman, a Connecticut guy as well. Um, yeah, it was really, you know, about a month or two of really putting our heads together and trying to figure out, you know, we we all have these 
organic connections um, in the web two space that, you know, given what is possible and what we deem can be possible in the future in this space, uh, we just saw a ton of potential and, and really kind of viewed it almost, you know, you hear the term the wild west a lot, but really kind of, you know, venturing into this, you know, in different verticals, um, seeing what's possible and what we can push. And, you know, to date, I know we're going to be discussing a couple of the projects that we already have, you know, in production. Um, but there's also, you know, those that we've already launched, one of which is actually minting today. So we're excited to, you know, have this platform and, and get a little bit of uh, information out on that as well. Um, but it's been, you know, a, a really busy 10 weeks now since our mint. And, um, you know, I think a lot of the people holding our, our membership uh, NFT are, are, you know, pleased to see the grind <laughs> and the work that we put in and uh, what we anticipate, you know, for the future is really pretty much endless. We're, we're, we're really excited. That's awesome. I think you guys are doing a service for the community and also for the industry as a whole. Uh, we definitely need it during, you know, what happened last 2021. Uh, we all saw that, right? Exactly what you guys mentioned. Everyone's just going out there without a plan, just trying to print some money and and even brands, believe it or not, right? They, they don't have to, a real plan out there. Uh, so uh, do these projects reach out to you? How, how has Visionary Studios, when you guys launched a token, I believe, right? And you said um, it's only been two months. Wow, that's that's not that long of a time, but you guys are doing pretty well on that aspect as well. Uh, and, and how does that serve the uh, the holders, I guess, for that, for your particular project, if you want to dive into that, and then we could, you know, jump into all the projects that you guys are working on. Yeah, so... I would, I would separate it into three buckets in terms of how projects come to us. So far, we've had a mix of, bucket number one would be existing projects, such as Solofox, which I think is a project that you're familiar with, um, that are, in, there you go, Jigo. Oh. Repping, repping the Tales of Solofox shirt. Yeah, I saw that so, shirt. I was about to say something. It looked really cool. <laughs> right. So, so the first bucket would be existing projects that, have partnered and reached out to, to Visionary um, to, to join forces and take that project to a level uh, beyond where they were currently at. So we, we've worked with them in an advisory capacity and a marketing capacity to try and grow it and develop, which you know we're a project development studio, um, to, to work with those teams and take their existing ideas and, and um, bring that to the next level. We also view those partnerships as not only partnering with successful companies that we're bullish on uh, in terms of growing and in, in the future, but we also view that as acquiring expertise and bringing that into the visionary umbrella. So for example, the Solofox partnership was uh, a great partnership because we acquired some of their technical expertise in the, on the development side of things. So all these different partnerships that we have we're doing number one because we think it's a great project that we can help with and bring to the next level. But number two, it adds extreme levels of talent to our team in areas that we might identify as a need. So that would be bucket number one. Bucket number two is us going out and reaching out to existing Web2 companies um, and partnering with different brands, uh, celebrities, et cetera, mm. and working with, together with them to create a new project. Uh, and we have that going on with, with Stickies, the Finger Joint, the Hungry Robot Chicken Club. We also have that uh, with Girl in the Red Cape, which we'll talk about in detail today. And then the third bucket, I would say, is a project entirely developed internally. And we have, uh, we have a big one of those going on right now. We haven't really released many details, but that is 100% uh, being developed internally. Um, so that, those would be the three buckets as to how our projects um, start. And we work on bringing those to market. I see. And does the Visionary Studios a project itself, because you guys have a, a token uh, a launch uh, two months ago, it kind of binds all those together. Can uh, you guys talk about that? Yeah, yeah absolutely. So yeah, go, go ahead. ahead. No, yeah, so absolutely. The, you know, the Visionary Studios um, Genesis membership, uh, as it's called, uh, really we view as the top tier um, where all of these projects that are all, you know, differing between buckets one, two, and three all fall under that top tier Visionary Studios membership. Um, so, you know, there is uh, obviously benefits to those initial 777 holders um, by A, having, you know, internal access to said projects. Um, there are also other benefits as well that, uh, you know, I could have Nick touch on, but um, 
yeah, that Visionary Studios as a whole uh, is the top layer. And then what we are doing is subsequently through partnership, through internal uh, connections, uh, generating new projects and develop developing them under Visionary Studios. Yeah, and, and to add on that, so each holder will receive benefit of, of all projects that are developed under the Visionary Studios umbrella, including partnerships such as uh, a Solo Fox. We've been very careful and thoughtful about how we um, release this benefit information, just being cognizant of, of potential securities issues and such. Right. Um, but we are actively pursuing uh, ways to deliver these benefits to our holders in a legally compliant and responsible manner. Um, we've, we've tried to communicate that to our holders and, and the community the best we can. Um, so we're, we're working on, the, correct, on the, the best mechanism in order to deliver that value. And uh, that's, that's pretty much where I'll leave it for now as we continue to uh, dot the T's and cross the I's there. <laughs> yeah, understood. Uh, uh, maybe a question for Jago. The, you, I'm sure you might be aware of, there's, there's a lot of different uh, funds out there, but none I've heard uh, where you guys are really doing those three buckets. That's really, really helpful. Uh, what would you say is the criteria for, um, and maybe it bleeds over to all three buckets for you know existing projects and um, even internal development. What's like some high level points like, hey, these are the ones that we wanna work with and these are the ones we're gonna stay far away from. Yeah, we, we wanna look for projects that have a real uh, plan for what they wanna build in the future and have the ability to build what they are looking to build. And maybe, maybe they're just underlooked. Maybe they're a little underfunded and don't have the marketing outreach that they need to kind of break into that next level. For instance, Solofox, I think Solofox team is perfect. Like they have a great outlook on what they're trying to build there. And, you know, they have a team of 20 people building it. And, wow. uh, but at the same time, you know, they're not getting the respect they deserve in the Solana NFT space. Everybody's out there chasing pump and dumps while there's a team of builders like that. Those are the people we want to bring in and, you know, give a platform to, uh, you know, really, you know, build what they are looking to build and, uh, you know, make it a success for them, help them make it a success, I should say. And is there, is there anything that you've seen from the existing projects that uh, is lacking uh, from the ones that you partner up with where you can kind of avoid that kind of uh, trouble with the new projects that you're bringing in that's kind of highlighted more than, than the rest? Is it, you know, the lack of funds? Is it the lack of marketing? Is there one thing or, or is it everything? So so far, um, I mean, we've only brought in two existing projects, one being Solo Fox, the other being um, Collectors Club. Both of them, uh, I, I don't think is, uh, they're, they're really lacking much other than just reach. Um, and and uh, they're, they're both ecosystems that have uh, the ability to break into Web2 communities like gaming, for instance, for Solofox or trading cards and collectibles for uh, Collectors Club, where there's uh, millions of people out there that would like to try these products and be a part of this community and the ecosystem. They just don't know it exists yet. And what we want to do is kind of just help them prop it up and help them break into other communities. And then, uh, you know, other people will see what they're building and it'll just be a kind of a waterfall effect. Because uh, I do believe that, you know, once you get a community going, hyped around your project, your community does the marketing for you. And, uh, you know, it will be a waterfall effect of community building inside the community itself. And uh, it's just about getting that kick started. And I think some of these projects, you know, they're almost there. They're almost to that point. But uh, just need a little push over the edge. I, I, and just to touch on that, I mean, as far as like the criteria, um, it, it also can kind of be broken into those, you know, three buckets where bucket one being partnerships. One of the things that Jago mentioned and that we look for is, you know, they are already previously established, um, have a community that is active and, you know, believes in the project and the team believes in the project, um, which also allows for us to, uh, <clears throat> to have a level of um, confidence, you know, that this isn't a rug or a cash grab, you know, there is a, a future in store for this project. Like Jago said, they just may need a bit of help, you know, getting there. Um, and that's kind of bucket one. Bucket two 
in dealing with Web2 partnerships. A lot of the ones that we are currently generating and, and talking to um, come from pre-existing Web2 connections. So there's already an added level of history and trust with those people. Um, you know, given that they know somebody that we know, um, it, it's something that gives us a bit of, uh, you know, levity in knowing that, you know, we can trust that person. They are serious about wanting to venture into this space um, and that they know us and know that, you know, we can take them to that next step. And then internally, I think bucket three is really us trying to find, you know, when talking criteria, um, what has not been done yet in this mm -hmm. space um, and what can be done by Visionary Studios, like what project, you know, can we put out that could change the look of this landscape and, you know, bring new utilization to whether it's NFTs, you know, tokenomics, things of that nature. Um, we always say, you know, the team, we're like, we want to zag. We don't necessarily want to follow the meta, but create new meta. Um, mm -hmm. So I think that that's like, you know, a pretty high level uh, where we place it as far as, you know, internal criteria, what we want to meet with our projects. Awesome. Yeah, that's, I mean, groundbreaking things happening in NFTs is happening every week. So uh, I imagine that For it's sure. pretty exciting, you know, uh, on your front working on these projects, because there's so many things that you can implement that uh, uh, projects that you work with probably do need help and you could implement that with your new projects coming out. Uh, so yeah, let's talk about, I know you said there's a release coming out and uh, is that bucket two or bucket three? <laughs> I, I know the bucket two is already um, some of the ones that may be launching and yeah, I took a peek through the website. So it uh, seems like you got some media personnel on there. So yeah, tell us what's uh, happening soon. So right now we got Hungry Robot Chicken Club minting. It's uh, the first, uh, restaurant chain to launch a digital rewards pass using Solana NFTs. Mm. It's basically, um, you know, you hold this robot NFT and you're going to get deals at the restaurant, some access to exclusive merch and events. And uh, you're basically going to be, uh, you know, a loyal uh, rewards member to Sticky's The Finger Joint and you're going to get exclusive rewards. And uh, Stickies, uh, they got 13 locations right now, mostly in uh, New York and New Jersey. Oh, nice. I lived in New Jersey for 13 years, and how come I never had Sticky Fingers joint? <laughs> are, you in, are you in South Jersey? I was in Bergen, uh, North. Yeah, because they're, they're up in, um, what was it, Hoboken? Oh, okay. I was in Hoboken a few times. I must have missed it. There's a lot of restaurants there. <laughs> yeah, they just started going into New Jersey, I believe. But um yeah, they got 13 locations. They got their 14th and 15th opening up soon. And then they plan on franchising, which they'll start spreading like fire, I believe, after that across the, across the country, which, um, you know, would spreads their uh, access to uh, holders, you know, locations, basically. Uh, I mean, they're going to be able to, uh, you know, grow. And as, as 2,222 NFTs, are out there and more um, franchises open up, I mean, it's gonna become a little scarce to, to get these exclusive rewards and and the rewards will probably get a little better, we'll see. What, what's, can you speak on the rewards for uh, anyone watching? What's the, what's the perks? There's like buy one, get one chicken sandwiches and uh, you know, just all, all stuff like that. I don't know, Nick, you got, you got the low down the first round of rewards. I know they'll be constantly uh, revol evolving month by month. And uh, at, as we gamify it a bit, as we go, it's going to be an evolving reward system because uh, we're, we're working with their um, online ordering system, Lunchbox. And uh, they've got a bunch of other clients that are, you know, looking mm. to, you know, looking to stickies to see, you know, is this going to be a success? Is, is this going to be something that maybe we got to try? And, you know, if, if this is something that works out well, there's going to be a lot of other restaurants that are going to go pop in and out oh. to this, trying to do the same thing. And Lunchbox is going to have the tech ready to go. We're going to be able to just kind of, you know, onboard more and more restaurants. <laughs> kind of the same thing. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think it's, it's for sure going to take on. I, I, just hearing it, I already know. <laughs> Yeah, this is a, a very exciting project for us for, for a, a lot of different reasons. But Stickies was the first kind of in real life uh, company that came to us and said, listen, we're 13 restaurants. We're looking to grow. We want to utilize NFTs and Web3 to help increase our exposure 
and we want to get involved at, at the early stages and have this community grow with us as they grow from 13 restaurants to, to 50 plus. Uh, so that was very exciting, but we're, we're also extremely excited about the Lunchbox partnership that Jago just mentioned, because we've worked uh, hand, in hand, with, hand in hand with them throughout this process in building out the, the infrastructure that's going to allow for these NFT holders to access their benefits. So we built out a platform and a dashboard for the user to lock, go to the website, connect their wallet, verify their NFT ownership, and then get their promo codes and their exclusive merch offerings, et cetera. Um, but that's really just phase one. And right now it is, uh, you get the most benefit out of the NFT if you do live close to a stickies and can access those in-store benefits. But we're constantly looking at new ways to deliver value to investors that are are not near a stickies location right now. Um, they do offer gold belly, which which is a, a online ordering platform that ships throughout the United States. We're working with Stickies to, to be able to deliver value to each of those holders so that somebody in California, for example, like yourself, mm -hmm. could um, get extreme value from holding this NFT just from the online, or, online ordering feature. Um, and Lunchbox is equally as excited about uh, uh, as we are about the future of Web3. And we're working with them to kind of take these web two um, components like regular in-store discounts, but kind of level them up and, and work, work with them as to what is a, what does a restaurant community look like in web three? What can we do there to push the limits in terms of building community and giving these NFT holders uh, extra benefit for being more involved and going out and marketing stickies and that type of thing. So this is really just phase one. Uh, we're really excited because as Jago mentioned, this is, kind of setting the standard for what a web two company, a web two in real life restaurant moving to web three looks like. And uh, we couldn't have picked a better partner uh, than Stickies and as well as Lunchbox to, to start this venture. with. And, and, and to touch on that, one, one of the things about the NFT space is it's a global industry. There's people all around the world minting NFTs and, and, and with uh, a project like Stickies, sorry, did I get rugged there? Uh, with a project like <laughs> no, you get with with a project like Stickies, um, you know it's a regional thing. It's only in New York and New Jersey at the moment. So bringing value to the people that are going to mint it, that live in another country or live in another state where it's not accessible to just walk down the street or order Stickies on Uber Eats or something like that, uh, it is definitely something we got to try to do. And um, with what we're doing with these codes. We definitely want to try to find a way to build out some sort of like a marketplace where somebody who is getting these codes in, say, you know, England or something, uh, they'd be able to just sell them to somebody in New York City who would be able to get, you know, an awesome deal on a cheap lunch, you know, and then this person makes a little passive income from the deals that they're getting from the NFTs. So we're trying to build out an art marketplace, maybe even get that on chain eventually, the coupons themselves. But um, that's something that would be coming down the road, something that we've been thinking about. No, that, no you guys are definitely doing uh, something that I would say people need and want. Like uh, I saw a big brands, uh, one big brand trying to do this, not with food, but with airlines, uh, Etihad Airlines, they're launching one. And I was a bit disappointed because, you know, people in the NFT landscape, they want to pay once and they want benefits for life, which doesn't, it doesn't really work in real life, right? Like a business needs to survive. <laughs> but I imagine a, a bigger business such as Etihad could provide a benefit for life and absorb that cost for the, the small segment of users uh, or that purchased their first level of NFTs. Uh, so just my two cents. Uh, I know 2022 might be too much <laughs> for a, a company like Stickies to absorb, but if there is some lifetime benefits, uh, I believe in this state is what, you know, uh, uh, consumers are looking for, uh, not need it, but uh, that would be super exciting because I imagine you can create some ridiculous marketing pieces around that. And those first NFT holders will be number one holders for life. And they can be the poster child, the poster customer that uh, the demographics of maybe stickies is looking for. And I just thought that, or I, I still think that brands need to do a lot better in servicing uh, consumers who purchase NFTs versus, you know, uh, building, taking their funds uh, and then doing something with it, which is not the case with real businesses like Stickies because they're not taking money and doing something with it. They already have a business, right? <laughs> they, they're, they're utilizing this to, you know, build out maybe um, some, some um, 
other uh, um, audiences or, or, or other ways to build your business. So super excited to hear that. Um, and, and just before we leave stickies, um, we talked about the criteria we're looking for in projects. We think a project like this is, is a great way to onboard new users to the Solana ecosystem. Probably 95% of Sticky's customers have never used Solana, but we're using this as an opportunity to take these customers, teach them how to download a phantom law, teach them how to go out and mint an NFT, um, and teach them what the possibilities of NFTs and Web3 are. And this is a, a, a vision we have for, for all of our projects, but onboarding and getting new users into the ecosystem is, is a very important thing for us in all the projects that we do. And we think a project like Snickies and Hung Hungry Robot Chicken Club is a great example of how that can be accomplished. Yeah, and, and since you mentioned Solana, uh, I, I know that they're super fast and efficient and easy to use. Have you guys uh, vetted some other things like Flow or Polly's getting some massive news because of Disney Accelerator? Uh, what's your thoughts on just you know other chains? I know you say you're chain agnostic, uh, just curious about your thoughts overall. Yeah, I'm definitely open to it. Um, I believe we actually do have a uh, Ethereum based project coming up. That's a little bit of an alpha drop. Um, but yeah, we're, we're open to using other things. Uh, I have NFTs on Polygon. I have some NFTs that were minted on Flow as well. Um, but yeah, we've been, we've been happy with the Solana community. Uh, we think it's thriving. We think that it's just getting started and, uh, you know, Solana really is trying to become a mass adoption blockchain. You can tell by just the way they're they're now putting out a mobile phone. They're putting out storefronts in big cities. Like they're trying to become a known, you know, known amongst the masses. And, you know, we want to be at the forefront of that. And, uh, you know, it's ripe right now in Solana, so. Yeah, yeah and I think as, as chain agnostic, I think it's project by project. You know, with certain projects where, for instance, stickies, you have uh, consistent transactions um, where new promo codes are getting airdropped. Um, obviously, there are costs, you know, incurred with those with those transactions. And on Solana, it just made sense given um, how cheap it is to make, you know, said airdrops. So I think it, it, it also just comes down to a project by project basis, looking at the project itself, um, looking at each chain's audience. Uh, um, and, and figuring out where the best fit is for that project. Awesome. Uh, can you give us any alpha on upcoming uh, existing Web2 companies that you might be uh, partnering with? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> if not, it's um, okay. We can move on to bucket three. <laughs> we'll give a little tease, I guess. I, you want to talk about that, but we, uh, we're in the very preliminary stages of uh, of a partnership with a very well-known uh, music act out of Mexico, which we're very, very excited about. That's a the very preliminary stages, um, but that that's a little uh, a little alpha here. Okay, and that's I one think... we'll be diving into a whole new market, uh, opening up the world to Latin America. That will be the basically the primary focus of, of our marketing and our outreach. It won't be any, you know. I mean, there will be some, you know, Solana NFT existing community marker. Actually, that one I don't think is the uh, Solana, but there will be some NFT community <laughs> marketing. But their the real primary marketing will just be to existing fans of this group. Oh, oh, and that more more alpha is a group. <laughs> oh, oh, God. oh. But I can narrow it down now. I thought it was, you know, Enrique Iglesias at first, but you know, it's, it's a group now. <laughs> but that's another prime example of um, something that will be an onboarding effort, right? There's a there's a large existing audience and fan for this music act, and uh, it will be our job to, to to go reach that that mass audience and educate them as to what NFTs are and the, and the possibilities there, and then onboard them onto the ecosystem. Um, to actually buy the NFT. One of, one of the cool things, I don't know, Nick, if you mentioned it, but with stickies, um, you know, in an effort to bring people into this space, we also partnered with Crossman, which allowed people to actually purchase the stickies NFT using a credit card, um, hmm. which makes it very easy for somebody to acquire not only their first NFT, 
um, get them into the ecosystem. But from a Solana user standpoint, it's just straight liquidity coming into the ecosystem, which is, you know, a great thing. Um, but, you know, we're always looking for those, you know, pre-existing partnerships that we can utilize to, in effect, bring Web2 customers into this space, because I think that's going to be, you know, one of the biggest hurdles, but something that we're, we're certainly looking to achieve, you know, over the next couple of years. And, and yeah. to touch on, uh, like, the Crossman, we had a barcode in all 13 Stickies locations up on the menu board, so anybody who walks into the store sees that they're launching this Hungry Robot Chicken Club NFT, can mm -hmm. just scan the barcode, access the website, learn more about it. If they're interested, they could go and buy one. Yeah, I think that's, you guys are one of the many, or one of the first, I would say, that's going to really help the, the non-crypto users on board, you know, scanning a QR code, doing cross mint, because that's like the hurdle, right? A lot of people don't understand Crypto, first of all, and then to come into NFTs is a kind of rabbit hole within a rabbit hole. So, and I'd imagine five, 10 years down the road that it's going to be seamless. People won't even know that they're buying NFTs, but they're going to know that it's a tradable asset, which is super exciting because I'm sure there's some really diehard sticky finger hands out there that would love uh, an NFT. So I'm super excited for the, for that. And I'm super excited for you guys. You guys are so busy, I imagine. So, so busy. <laughs> Which brings us to our last bucket, because I can't believe you've been working on a, on a third bucket with the first two that is probably keeping you super busy. Uh, but yeah, internal development, anything you can tell us about there, because you it sounds like you're working on some very interesting things. You brought on some media folks as well. I'm not sure if that's the bucket two or bucket three, but can you speak on that? Yeah, so the internal development, um, you know, we're still kind of, we, we partnered with a couple amazing uh, graphic design firms um, that we are working on our own in-house project. Um, the media project that you were touching on, um, Girl in the Red Cape, which, you know, really kind of started, we, we were introduced, uh, through Kyle, one of our other teammates to the Ethereum artist Stuzor, and he has, you know, a pretty incredible following and just a portfolio that kind of blew us away. And when we were looking for the initial Genesis membership NFT image, um, it really kind of, I know it sounds cliche, but it, it like spoke to us. It was like the perfect image. Um, you, I'm sure you've seen it behind Jago, mm -hmm. but it was the two hands with the girl uh, in the red cape staring yeah. at it. And, you know, for a while as a team, we were trying to figure out, you know, we love Stuzor's work. We've already partnered with him on, on the Genesis. Uh, what could be, you know, the next steps for a project with him? And luckily, you know, we all put our heads together and rather than focusing on the hands or the orbs, we focused on the girl in the image. And really that was kind of the, the aha moment where there was a story to be told, you know, who is this girl? Mm -hmm. um, you know, what, what is this planet she's on? Where is she going? What's she looking for? And through, you know, as I mentioned earlier, organic connections, uh, Kyle, who's out in LA, had, uh, he's spent a ton of time in, in the industry uh, in Hollywood. Uh, we were able to actually sit down with uh, Zach Stentz, who is a Hollywood screenwriter. He wrote um, the original Thor screenplay, oh. as well as X-Men First Class, uh, The Fringe. And, you know, we actually got a, a Zoom with him. And, you know, before he even was on the Zoom, he took a look at Stuzor, Stuzor's portfolio and resume. And, you know, he was equally as blown away and immediately was like, I have an idea. You know, I, I can get this going. And so we had this partnership. And one of the cool things with this space is we're, we're, you know, a team of six friends. Who are we to direct a guy with the talent level of Stuzor and the resume of Zach Sense? So for us, from a creative standpoint, we just wanted them to collaborate, work together. You know, we're not going to give you any notes or direction. You know, we'd love you two to sit down in a room and figure it out, which I think in the industry, from both, both the artist perspective and a writer's perspective, you know, that, that opportunity really doesn't exist right now um, as far as, you know, being able to be, get as creative and wacky as you want and not have to get, you know, any feedback or direction and notes, you know, from a production company. Um, so through that, Zach was able to put together an incredible story. Um, hmm. And from there, this, this project kind of took shape. And um, we were looking for the voice, you know, to read this story and really immerse the audience into this world. And lucky, luckily enough, we uh, landed Lance Reddick, who um, people may know from The Wire and John Wick. 
Um, he was oh, also wow. the voice. Yeah. He's a voice actor in the Horizon video game and Destiny. Um, so, you know, it, it was just a perfect fit. And, you know, much like Zach, when we got the concept and the artwork and the story in front of Lance, you know, he was he was just blown away and super excited to be involved. So, um, you know, a lot like our other projects, it really was just organic connections that we had that, you know, because of what this space offers, this project took shape. And um, what it's become is a 12 chapter or 12 episode uh, story that, you know, we're gonna have 12 new worlds created by Stuzor, um, a, a full mint where each world has 777 NFTs. Um, that NFT is an actual frame uh, from mm. each cinematic experience. Uh, one of the coolest takeaways that we got as far as what this idea relates to is Zach Stentz saying, you know, how cool would it be to own a frame from a Christopher Nolan movie or a Marvel movie, you know? and have an in, you know, before that movie blows up. Um, and with that, you know, we will have weekly launches or, you know, weekly debuts of each, each chapter with the hope that the community that's built around this project is coming up with their own theories and, you know, uh, coming up with cool ideas of, you know, who she's looking for, where she's going, you know, how this is going to end. Um, hoping to build kind of like a lost, you know, Reddit lost, you know, what, what are these, what does this mean type of feel? And um, from there, you know, the, the overarching idea is that, you know, this leads to potential IP, you know, a, a Solana space web three or film three project um, that we're hoping we can debut, you know, in the metaverse, we, we have a couple of opportunities to do movie screenings or episode screenings in portals. Um, awesome AMA and panel opportunities as well, and kind of build this as, as you know, one of the first uh, Web3, you know, series premieres in a, in a sense. And, you know, hopefully when all said and done, we're sitting on about, you know, an hour to an hour and 20 minute, basically film. And uh, the potential for IP is there to, to really, you know, pitch this to, to be a, a on-screen series or, you know, movie uh so it, it's it's been pretty amazing yeah i i'm surprised that there isn't one out to your point there's not one out already about the web3 series i know seth uh wrote or not seth rogan uh seth something he who's uh hey who, the one who had his board ape so uh, stolen seth green oh, and seth then green, he yeah. was it was implementing his board ape into his show i don't think that's out yet but i'm surprised that there's not more web3 show tunes that's been created yet i'm, I'm really shocked because it's been over a year and there's been a lot of ip yeah, it's holders definitely... yeah it's definitely happening, you know, film yeah. three, you know, on both Ethereum, a lot of it, I think is on Ethereum, but you know, it, you're, I have a feeling and we feel the same way that, you know, this is going to become a space that is an incubator for IP, uh, just because of the amount of creativity that it allows, you know, from the artists and from the talent. Um, I, I, you know, we as a team would not be surprised if within the next two to three years, you're seeing pretty large scale IP projects that generated from these ecosystems. Yeah, it'll be super exciting to see uh, maybe in a different direction uh, where the NFTs from your partners get integrated or even popular one from all of Solana. I'm sure that's been in the talk. So uh, yeah, you guys seem like you have the, the framework for that. So that, that sounds like something I would watch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, with the pearl and the red tape, like the and, and the caliber of talent that is on the project, the opportunities are really endless in what could come from that IP. And, uh, you know, we're going to just work on building that out. Awesome. 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 And so we covered all three buckets. Is there anything in terms of Web3 uh, that you've seen as the next move or next, I wouldn't say next trend um, that gets you guys excited uh, or is it just really putting your nose down and working on all the things that are already exciting out there. I think thinks what, what is exciting is seeing these big companies and these big existing uh, brands and, you know, companies get involved in web free space. Um, that, that's what the next move is like in the past, in the last decade, crypto has been somewhat of an underground movement and it's kind of just breaking its way into the mainstream and, you know, now we're seeing huge 
restaurant chains launch Solana NFTs and and hopefully you know it'll spur more to do the same and uh, it, it's that that I think is very exciting because it's bringing a lot of legitimacy to the space, bringing a lot more people to the space, bringing a lot more capital to the space. It's overall just uh, awesome to see real businesses get involved for once. Hundred percent, no rugs there in real businesses. We we can find sticky fingers. <laughs> Awesome. And what's what's most exciting for me is just the fact that um, we are here. Everybody thinks they're late to crypto because of, they see price increases and such like uh, stuff like that. We still believe that we're very very early in terms of how this Web three uh, is being built out, and and certainly when you look at adoption, we're really still in that first inning. Um, so for it was all a priority for us to get away from our from our web two careers and focus on web three because we believe so strongly in it. And it's exciting that we've been able to do that. All six of us are now working on visionary studios full time. Nice. And it's just very exciting to be building that infrastructure, building our brand um, on Solana for now and, and whatever other blockchains we end up releasing projects on, but putting our uh, flag, planting our flag this early and, and looking to build a brand that's trusted and uh, can be looked to to develop interesting ideas that are going to further the space. Jasper mentioned, we're trying to zag um, when others are zigging. And we, <laughs> we want all of our projects to be doing something to move the ecosystem forward, whether that's in terms of uh, a new idea that hasn't been tried before, or just simply onboarding new people into Solana, into crypto, into NFTs. So it's just really exciting for us as a team to be spending our time and efforts in this space right now this early um, because we're we're pumped about what the what the rest of this decade looks like as more mass adoption uh continues to to increase yeah I'm s s go ahead oh no I, I you know they hit the nail on the head i, I was going to just say i'm you know excited uh, one of the one of the big features as we mentioned is is onboarding and you know creating projects that provide holders IRL utility at, at you know, brick and mortar companies. Um, I think, you know, will just bring in mass adoption to this, you know, and seeing what it can offer. You know, one of the things that we loved about the Stickies idea was they were giving out promo codes anyway. You know, you mm -hmm. get an email with a promo code. This allows a brick and mortar small business to generate revenue while also providing utility and benefits to loyal customers. Um, and it's just an awesome looking NFT. <laughs> um, but we're, you know, that's one of the things I, I personally am, am excited about is seeing these being used in real life, you know, having that word of mouth spread and then, you know, leading to mass adoption where capital starts flowing into the space, uh, benefiting everyone. So. Wow, I'm gonna I'm gonna FOMO because uh, when I see a sticky fingers open up in California, I'm gonna be like, wait a minute, I know these guys, I've heard of these guys, <laughs> and I'm super excited for just all the 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 data that you're gonna get uh, and the helpful information that you're gonna get, and just to speak to you from a year from now, uh, because from a business point of view, uh, not many many people has had that insight of you know who's the most loyal customer, how much have they spent. It's all transparent yeah. on the blockchain and it's tradable. 24 seven. I mean, that's going to be very intriguing once the brands realize how powerful it is. And no one, no, none of the brands realize how powerful that is. And I'm excited for the consumers like me, because for brands that I frequent, I would love to be one of those, you know, poster childs for them. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I'm super excited that, uh, to talk to you guys a few months down the road, because I'm sure it's going to be like night and literally day from <laughs> our conversation today. Yeah, the space moves fast. Uh, a week in crypto is like a, a year anywhere else. So constantly on our toes, that's for sure. Yeah, awesome. we were one of one of our little internal projects uh, initially kind of lends itself to that, you know, tracking of how we're growing and how the space is growing. But, you know, we initially when we did our, our mint of 777, um, there were over 12,000 concurrent wallets trying to, to mint Visionary. And we talked to Stuzor about doing the VSY1. Uh, commemorative free mint just for anybody that wanted to be a part of the discord and be a part of the community. And, you know, we, the reason, one of the main reasons we did that is to launch that every year with a new piece of art and just track how our community has grown. So, you know, 
seeing this year having about 6,500. The hope is that by next year we're we're shelling out VSY twos in the 60 to 70,000 range. So we'll wow. see. Wow, exciting. Man, there's there's a lot you guys are working on. Uh, is there anything that we miss at all? Because I know from my limited vision of what a, a, a Visionary Studios does and what you guys are working on, is there anything that I missed before we wrap things up? We have a lot going on. I mean, I, in terms of a deep dive, we'll leave it to a Hungry Robot Chicken Club and Girl in the Red Cape for today. But we do have the, the Collectors Club partnership and we're actively working on a, a new project with them, which we're, we're very excited about. Um, so maybe we can come back on the show here and uh, yeah. in the near future and discuss some of the other projects we have in development in more detail. Yeah, and of course, a... of course, Solo Fox, which is we saw that they were on your show back in the day. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, uh, yeah, they're uh, coming out with their Gen 1. Their uh, Dungeon Quest gameplay should be going live this week. So it's exciting to see what they're building as well. Yeah, yeah just visionarystudios.io has, you know, links to all of the, you know, ongoing projects that are either currently operational and some that are still in development and post-production. Yeah, and we, we have a few other projects that are kind of at the goal line in terms of coming to an agreement and formalizing uh, the setup for each of those projects. So we'll definitely have some big announcements coming out here in the next uh, week or two. Um, but yeah, for, for now, Hungry Robot Chicken Club, there's about 700 NFTs left. If uh, if you want to get in on the stickies movement, the, uh, the Web3 restaurant movement, let's grab one of those today before they sell out. But uh, yeah, we're very excited about these projects and really appreciate you having us on and giving us the uh, the opportunity to talk about them. In detail. Yeah, not a problem. In the future, we'll have you back and uh, your partner's back maybe with you so that we can ask them because there's so much that we can dive into how much you've helped them, right? And because from your point of view, uh, this is something that is native to you. But for them, they're probably really happy that they're working with you as, as I think I've heard through the grapevine. So that'd be great. I'll put all the launch information for Sticky Fingers down below, uh, all the information links for uh, Visionary Studios and where to find these guys. And, and really, uh, thank you guys for coming on. Can't wait to have you back. And really, thank you for pushing the space forward. That's what I'm trying to do is just to document the space, really, and not looking for anything in return. Uh, because there's, like you said, there was, there's a hole, right? There's nothing out there. And it's up to people like us to fill that gap. And I'm excited for that. Awesome. Thank, you. Yeah, thank you for having us. Yeah, can't yeah, wait to see you guys out in the East Coast one day. Absolutely. Thanks, Jeff.